Hello YouTube, this is Salam. In this video I show you how I'm going to re-glue the magnets on this flywheel that belong to Kohler engine. I hope you enjoy this video. I bought a used Grasshopper 725 mower and I got good deal on it because the engine wasn't running correctly. When I inspected it, I know there is an issue with the engine head. One of the cylinders head was busted and it was leaking oil and I know there is some issue inside it. So I bought that machine and when I got it home I disassembled it and I discovered another issue with the engine. The magnets on the flywheel they came off and they were stuck to the stator. I went to the dealer and I asked him uh, what kind of repair I need to do to this. They don't have any solution other than sell you a new flywheel and a new flywheel cost about $300. I took the flywheel, the original flywheel I cleaned it real good, then I hit it with the sand blaster, removed all the rust, and I sanded the area because there is some residue of the glue they use. They use some type of contact cement between the magnets and the flywheel. And I also cleaned the magnets. And the flywheel right now is completely clean and dry. I have another color engine. I remove the flywheel to see how they glue these magnets. What I discovered when they install them, they didn't space them correctly. I took a caliber and I measured the spacing. Each one of them is different. Also depth wise, they all different. Some of them, they feel higher or closer to the edge of the flywheel. This is original color flywheel nobody tampered with it so what I did I experiment with installing the stator and then install the flywheel to see the depth I need and what I discover if I take one of these paint stir a piece of wood they give it to you for free at the hardware store or at any paint store and I cut it to one inch strip this about the right spacing for the setup from the bottom section. The distance from the bottom to the edge is about one inch. And these, they measure about a three quarter of inch. So I need to space it about eighth inch from the bottom or eighth inch from the top. It will be easier to do it from the bottom. So that's what I'm going to use this strip for. They may get stuck to the glue after the, the glue harden. However, I'll be able to use a small screwdriver to break them because they would. I also thought about using cardboard. However, the cardboard is compressible. So it's not going to give you the right shimming. And you need about 8 inch. Or you need these magnets to be in the middle. And this will hit the stator correctly. And it will uh, give you the most power or charging capability to charge your battery. Spacing wise, I took the magnets, all six of them, and I install them inside the flywheel. And then I took measurement from the first and last one. They all attach to each other. And I have about inch and a half. So I divided inch and a half by six and I came up with quarter inch and I'm going to use these chips of wood they measure exactly quarter inch to use those as the spacers between the magnets in my shop I have this material to use them to glue the magnets to the flywheel I bought this JB weld for another project and I have this five minute epoxy I'm going to go with the JB weld. The reason for that, it has handling time between four to six hours, or show it sets in four to six hours. It also fully cured 15 to 24 hours, has a tensile strength of 5,020 PSI, and when fully cured, it will handle a temperature up to 550 Fahrenheit. So this ideal for something like this. I have enough time to apply 
the JB weld to set the magnets, space them, and then clamp them using these clamps. Also, when I removed this flywheel, what I discovered, these magnets, they're not the same. They alternate. I don't know which one is north or south or how they exactly set up, but if you take a magnet, one of them will repel the magnet, the next one will attract it. Repel it, attract it. So it alternates these magnets. You need to make sure to alternate yours, otherwise this setup will not charge the, uh, the battery. You need to make sure the magnets, they set in this order. Repel, uh, attract, repel, attract, repel, attract. And I uh, tested these magnets, and I have uh, three of them. They attract to the magnet or to the one side of the magnet. You need to make sure you hold it in one side. Don't allow it to do this. Hold it like this. And three of them. They attract, so I left them unpainted. The other three, I painted them white for the purpose of this demonstration. You don't have to paint them. You could use a marker or piece of tape or anything to identify which one which. So when we install them, we install them in alternative fashion. White, black, white, black, etc. The best way to remove the glue from these magnets and from the flywheel is to use a cutter and scratch the adhesive they use. It was hard to remove it with sandpaper or with sandblaster. And this was the best method to remove that glue. You need to make sure all the surfaces are clean and dry so the JB Weld will do a good job into sticking these magnets to this flywheel and they will never come off. I cleaned all the area with acetone and then I hit it with compressed air. You could also use a brake party cleaner and then dry it real good before you apply the adhesive. I'll probably mix a little bit too much. It makes no difference. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to start in the middle so I could use the clamp to clamp the magnet at the edge. If I put a magnet like they did over here, I will not be able to clamp it.
all the magnets spacing is good I will wait till tomorrow morning leave it clamped once the JB weld cure then I remove the clamp while the flywheel is still clean and dry I will paint it using this paint to prevent the flywheel from rusting it is the next morning and the JB weld hardened That's a piece of JB Weld. I have some JB Weld stuck to the outside. I need to get those off after I remove the shims. The metal uh, set or this JB weld, it has metal flake or steel flake, it will attract to the magnet. I try to remove as much JB weld yesterday as possible. When it was still liquid, it seeped down and it was filling these gaps. And it's been only about eight hours 
since I applied this JB Weld, so it's still a little bit soft. You need to make sure this surface, it doesn't have any JB Weld on it or it will hit the stator. I'll take it out and blow it with air. It's also a good idea to test the fitment of the stator and these magnets just in case we apply too much JB weld. It's perfect. I have about 8 inch clearance. This will work just fine. Make sure to protect the machine surface inside because if paint got inside, it will prevent the flywheel from seating all the way on the crankshaft. It has been about 15 minutes and the paint feel dry. This is a flywheel ready to be installed. A few tips. Before you install it, make sure the surface is clean and the crankshaft is clean. There is no metal stuck to the magnets. Torque it to specs. And then make sure the magnets spacing is the, will clear this magnet. So when this rotate, it doesn't shear them off. The two magnets for the engine. If you have filler gauge, set that distance to about 10 thousandths of inch. If you don't, you could use any piece of paper. This measure about 20 thousandths of inch. It should allow the engine to start. But you need to make sure you have this clearance so when the flywheel rotate, it doesn't break those magnets. After you get your engine running, then turn the engine off. Measure the voltage on the battery. Use a voltmeter on DC scale. It should read a little bit over 12 volt if your battery is good and charged. And then run your engine and read on the battery terminal. It should read higher than what the battery was showing without the engine running. Other than that, this job is done. Thank you for watching and thank you for your support. And I'll see you later.